Are you planning a natural childbirth? Are you looking to learn more about an unmedicated delivery and the pain? If so, then you're on the right video because today I'm going to share with you more about it. Aloha everyone and welcome to today's video, Natural Childbirth unmedicated pain and experiences. My name is Iceland and on this channel, Boylan's Happily Ever After, we share family videos, mommy videos, and have product reviews. So if you're new and this interests you, please consider subscribing. And if you want to know more about anything you see here on this channel, be sure and check the links down in the description below this video or leave a comment. I'd love to connect with you there. And as always, if you think these videos might help someone, please share them where you can. Also, a huge thank you to those of you who have subscribed since our last video. Your support means so much to us here. Now, let's get to this video. Really quick here, I just wanted to share a disclaimer on this video. These are just going to be my opinions that I share. I am not a medical professional. And you should always be consulting with your healthcare provider, midwife, doctor, whoever you're going to be working with during your pregnancy. I have had four natural unmedicated births, two in the hospital, two at home, and I have shared those birth stories here on this channel along with some other great pregnancy information. I'll have playlists linked down in the description below for you. Be sure and go and check those out too. I wanted to share more with you about the pain and the experiences because the truth is it's going to hurt and that's okay. It's supposed to <laughs> and how you decide to deal with it that's gonna be up to you. If it's your first time, you might not make a noise at all, or you could scream like a wounded soldier on a battlefield. You're gonna learn new things about yourself, new noises that you make, and how to push your baby out. And honestly, when your baby crowns, that most likely will be some of the most pain you will ever experience in your life. And this nanosecond of the crowning is going to feel like an eternity. <laughs> and another thing that can happen at the crowning point is you can stop pushing and have your doctor or midwife or whoever's helping you deliver go and stretch that area and help assist the baby out to help prevent tearing if possible. And it's gonna take everything inside you to just pause and let that moment happen. But as soon as it passes and you're pushing, you're like done, almost done. It gets better from there. The shoulders can be a little bit painful as well to have come out, but usually you're starting to feel that relief. <laughs> I want to share all this to help prepare you, not scare you. I went into my labor and deliveries planning an unmedicated and natural childbirth and knowing that the crowning point is called the ring of fire. That's when you're stretched the most and the head is right about to come out. So I knew if I could make it through the contraction process, which could be very long and painful and exhausting, that if I can make it to that ring of fire, that crowning point, that's gonna be the largest part of the pain and just handle that moment, because it's so brief. I still can't believe that I've done it four times. And then let's talk a little bit about the tearing. I did tear with my third, and honestly, I did not know. And then I tore in a way that is more uncommon. Usually you tear down towards your bottom, and I more kind of tore up and on the side. I believe this partly was because of my position and maybe gravity a little bit. I was kneeling on my bed and holding on to the headboard. And so I think once I had the head out and the shoulders came, that the, sh the width of the shoulders is what made me tear. It was optional for me to decide if I wanted to get stitched up. It was more cosmetic. <laughs> and then it was also optional if I wanted to have any numbing medication there. The midwife had said the numbing medication can cause swelling, which then can make that harder for that area to heal and come together as well. So it was just one and I did it unmedicated. And if you want to know more about this birth story, I'll be sure and link it down in the description below for you. Looking back, I feel like getting stitched was a little more painful than giving birth, but still both are extremely painful. And I have a fear of needles. So I just took the pillow, put it on my face and was like, I'm not gonna watch, I'm not gonna know anything, just do what you need to do, I'll get through it. All right, so back to labor and delivery. So with my first, I knew I wanted to have an unmedicated natural childbirth. My mother was a part of this, and so when I told her, she thought I was pretty crazy. But I have a giant fear of needles, and one in my spine that's giant, I was like, no way over my dead body, no. I was like, I'll just take the chances. Our bodies are meant to have babies. How bad can this be? 
I seriously just did not want a needle in my spinal column or any of the risks that can come with having that done. <laughs> she really thought I was nuts because when my mother had all three of us, it was a time where it was really big to have natural and unmedicated childbirths, that it was almost frowned upon having a medicated childbirth. She was there for one of her sister's births and she had an epidural and my mother said that she was almost like falling asleep between the contractions that it made it look extremely easy that they were having to wake her up to push them through. Again, everyone's labor and delivery story is their own. It's just that my mother was really like take the easy route, do the medication, no shame. <laughs> so do a little research on epidurals. Find out if that's something you're gonna want or not want and have a game plan for if it's something you don't and you do have to, like maybe an emergency C-section where they do those. Be prepared for that. There is no way to predict how your labor and delivery is going to go. Another thing that kind of factored into my whole birth plan is I had job shadowed in a family birth center and seen many pregnancies. And after watching some women get the epidural, it made me even more not want that. For the one lady, they couldn't get her to arch her back enough between the contractions to get it into her spine. And they just kept trying and trying. Eventually they got it, but I had so much compassion for her and she was so brave and trying so hard. And once they got it there, it made a tremendous difference for her. Another thing that made me want to have a natural childbirth is because you can walk sooner after. If you have an epidural, I'm pretty sure they make you wait 24 hours before you can get up and move around again. I wanted to be able to move around as soon as possible. Epidurals can sometimes lead to a longer hospital stay and I also wanted to just ensure getting home and back to my life and enjoying my baby sooner. Some women might go, this is great, I get to sit down, I get to relax for a day after all of this. Then that's the way to go. I also felt like getting an epidural left more of a room for risk for things. In the fact that you can leak spinal fluid, that maybe it doesn't take the pain away, you can get an infection there. I just didn't like anything personally about the sound of it. I'm a person that really likes to have control of my body and be as healthy as possible. And so I felt like going in with the mindset for an all-natural unmedicated birth was going to keep things that way as much as possible. And I also trusted my body and the pain to tell me what to do, what was best. Listen to yourself, listen to your body, you're gonna know. And after labor and delivery, I only took ibuprofen. And in all honesty, delivering the placenta, that's pretty uncomfortable and painful too, but you're like, oh, not quite as bad as just giving birth. But be prepared for a second round of pain and shortly after. Again, I just wanted to get back to healing and recovery as fast as possible and being able to enjoy my baby 100% as naturally as possible. So with my first, and I feel like even with my second, I did not want pain medication until it came time for me to push. I could handle all the contractions, but once it was time to push, it got so intense that I started asking for pain medication, but at that point it was too late, so I pushed into that pain. So if I can share a great piece of advice with you, if you can make it through your contractions and get to the point to start pushing, most likely that pushing is gonna counterreact some of the pain. And that was like tremendous. It like gave you that momentum and that energy after going through that exhausting labor to wanna push and say goodbye to that pain. And what's even pretty neat is if you're starting to feel the urge to push, it probably is time. You don't have to be all the way to 10 dilated just to start pushing. Usually those go pretty hand in hand, but if you're feeling that urge, unless the doctor's advising you not to push, it's probably going to be okay if you start. So as far as pain went, I feel like my first and third were the least painful, my second and fourth were the most painful, my second during the labor, my fourth during the crowning. Each experience was different and a different level of pain, and I handled the labor a little bit different with each one. You know, my first, I much more wanted to be down and in the fetal position and curled up. Whereas with my second, I just wanted to stand and lean over something. And that was kind of the same with my third. And then I feel like with my fourth, I just wanted to sit or be in the fetal position as well. Movement helped. And I feel like with my fourth, some of the pain did make me a little bit nauseous. You just kind of go, you know, your body, it takes on its own thing. You're having a baby. You're focused on that and listen to your body. 
childbirth, labor, delivery. It is such an incredible experience. If you're pregnant, congratulations. If this is your first time, don't be scared. I hope sharing some of my pain and delivery stories helps you go into your delivery more confidently. Don't be ashamed of any outcome of how your delivery goes. It's gonna be your very own special experience for you and your baby and who's ever there also a part of it. So thank you so much for watching today. I have more videos coming up on this topic, especially one about how to manage the pain during deliveries. So please consider subscribing for more. And if you learned something new, be sure and give this video a thumbs up, share it where you can. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Aloha.